All right, let's try this one. This is a more complicated rational function and with an integral, makes it more interesting. So if you would, take a moment and see if you can try this on your own. All right, so what you should have noticed already is what you're gonna have to do is break up the function. Notice the power on the bottom, it's x cubed. Also notice how it's already broken up. It's already broken up so that you can put it into factored form. It's already in factored form. So you can break it up and use partial fractions. So you have x squared minus x plus 2 over, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the LCD. You know what the LCD is, x minus 1 x squared plus 1 equals some number, I don't know, i got to try to find it, x minus 1 plus, since this is x squared, what you want to do is you want to put the numerator one less degree. So it would be bx plus c over x squared plus 1. Now what you want to do now is multiply everything by the LCD. What's going to happen is things are going to start canceling out. So you have x squared minus x plus 2 equals a, and this is going to be uh, x squared plus 1 plus bx plus c parentheses x minus 1. Now what we have to do is solve for a, b, and c. Now there's two ways to go about doing this. One way is to simply factor all of this out. If you factor all of it out you can line up the x squares. You have one equation there, all the x's, and then all the constants. You can do that. If you want, what you can also do is just plug in numbers for x. And that's kind of my preference, because then you can pick any number you want for x, and you can pick it in a way so that things can cancel out. So for example, if I pick let x equals, now, if I pick 1, right, that would make this 0, right? And if I make this 0, 0 times this, everything's going to cancel out. And 0 is very easy, or sorry, 1 is very easy to plug it, everything in. I can also make a, right, a would be there still and one on this side would be really easy to plug in. So let me first set x equal to 1. When I do that, I get on this side, I get 1 minus 1 plus 2 equals 1 squared is 1 plus 1 gives me a 2. So that's 2a. When I simplify this, this cancels out I'm left with 2 equals 2. I divide both sides by 2, and I get a equals to 1, or a equals 1. So let me put that to the side. So a equals 1. All right, so all I have to do now is find the b and find the c. I already know what a is, so that's going to come in handy. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to set x equal to 0. If I set x equal to 0, this b is going to cancel out. I already know what a is, so then all I would have to do is find c. 0 on this side just leaves me with 2. So I have 2 on this side. I already know what a is. a is 1. So then I would have 
zero plus one. Let me write some of this work out. B times zero plus C, and this is going to give me zero minus one. When I simplify all of that, zero plus one is one, so this is two equals one. This cancels out, right? Because that's just B O or sorry, B zero. B O is something different. And then you have C and then zero minus one, you know, is minus one. So it's just a negative C. So then I solve for C. When I solve for C, this is a positive one, negative C, and so C equals negative one. So C equals negative one. Now I have all of that. Now what I'm gonna do is, since I'm running out of room, is I'm gonna erase all of this. So if you need to, pause the video and write some of this work down. All right, so I have my C. Actually, I need this. I have my C, so all I need to do is find out what B is. Now, I already use zero, and I already use positive one. So what I can do now is I can let x equal to negative one. When I do that, I gotta make sure my signs are correct, or it's gonna throw everything off. I already know what A and I know what C is, so that's that's useful. So this is gonna give me uh, one plus one, right? A negative times a negative gives me a positive, so that's plus one plus two. I know what my A is. My A is positive one. This is negative one squared, so that gives me a positive one plus I'm looking for what B is, so I don't know what B is, but I am plugging in negative, so it's going to make it a negative B. Plus, my C is negative 1. So negative 1, and then I have negative 1 minus 1. Alright, so you start simplifying this, and it takes a long time to do a problem like this. So let's try to make it quicker. So this is four equals one. This is one plus one, which is two, times one, which is two, plus, this is negative two, and you're gonna distribute that negative two to both the B, negative b and the negative one. So that's gonna make it a positive two b plus a positive two. So I have four on this side, you see that? Two plus two is four. I subtract it from both sides, so I get zero equals two B. So that means B equals zero. So I put that up here. All right, I found all three of those. So what I can do now is just plug those in. Alright, and I'm basically going to split up this, um, these fractions. So this A is 1, so this is 1 over x minus 1, integral of dx, minus, and it's going to be minus because I have that negative there, and the B cancels out. So I have 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Now these are both very straight, well, this is very straightforward. This is gonna be natural log with the absolute value of this, right? Now this is slightly more complicated. This is gonna involve trig substitution. And so let's do that real quick. So let me set x equal to tan theta. And then you have dx. Take the derivative of that. What's the derivative of tangent theta? Yes, it is secant squared theta, d theta. 
So then what I can do is I can substitute. And I'm just going to put this on the side real quick. So when I put it on the side, when I put tan theta in, tan squared theta plus 1, that is a trig identity. Tan uh, squared theta plus 1 gives me secant squared theta. All right, so when I do that, when I do that, I have secant squared theta d theta. In this whole thing, since this is tan squared theta plus 1, that's equal to secant squared theta. Now this cancels out, so when I take the integral of this, it's just theta. But you want to convert that in terms of x. So in terms of x, you take the tan inverse of both sides, r tan, and you're going to get r tan of x. Because remember, when you're doing an integral and you're doing substitution, you have to back substitute and put it in the terms of what you originally started with. So if you start in terms of x, you want to end with in terms of x. So this is the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 1 because of the restrictions of natural log logarithms. It has to be positive. So you want to put the absolute values around it. That's the reason for that. Now also with this, minus, and then it's going to be arc tan, or tan inverse, of x plus c, plus the constant. And you always need to put that when you're doing an indefinite integral. All right? Now it's a very long problem and a very intense problem. So see if you can do this, if, if you were having difficulty, see if you can try to do this on your own. There's a lot of steps and it's very, very complicated. But how do you get out of it? Well, one, bat, one, <laughs> one bite at a time. So if you eat this problem one bite at a time, it's not gonna be that hard. You just have to take it step by step. And that's it.